you, I'm sure you've you've seen it. The now um, celebrated interview between Joe Rogan and Robert Malone. Mm -hmm. And one of my takeaways from that three-hour conversation was I didn't realize just how intertwined so-called um, private enterprise, um, pharmaceutical companies, but the research community and the government financed research community, NIH and all of the, the agencies below it, um, it's, it's a lot more entwined than I imagined because I assumed that there would be corruption because at very least the, the government is doling out these grants and choosing winners and losers right. and, and scientifically that's quite dangerous because right. they might be wrong but they're they're go, you know fauci is going to dominate um with that imprimatur that's that right his this, worldview yeah this paradigm is the one that's accepted by the government and so even if there's private money involved they're going to wait for the government to do that so just from a sort of uh, scientific method integrity of, of the research uh, paradigm, I was worried about it. But, but listening to Malone talk about um, the sort of the inside of the system, there really isn't much of a, dis I can't figure out what the distinction is between big pharma and the government health industrial complex. What's, where's the line? Is, is there a bright line? So let's take the comforting words of the acting director of the National Institutes of Health, Lawrence Tabak. So Francis Collins, he goes over to the White House. He's now Joe Biden's special advisor on science. He gets a 50% pay hike. His pay goes from $203,500 up to three hundred grand on the White House payroll. And in steps Lawrence Tabak. He was the former deputy ethics uh, director over at the National Institutes of Health. He's now the acting director. Uh, for the budget hearing in the House, all appropriations start in the House, Tabak's in the hot seat and Republican congressman from Michigan, John Molinaire, has him for five minutes. All five minutes was spent on the third party royalties. We had broke our report 36 hours earlier. Molinaire has the new acting director of NIH in the hot seat. And finally, at minute four, Tabak admits, yes, every single one of those third party royalty payments has the appearance of a conflict of interest. However, trust us, we have firewalls. We have firewalls. Okay. So they're going to make the argument, Matt, to answer your question, that there are ethical firewalls in place. Now, I'm not comforted, and here's why. We talked about this third-party royalty database having full transparency 17 years ago with the Associated Press in 2005. We requested the same database. And I can see the top line numbers. So I can tell you there's about $400 million over the last decade that flowed in. And I can see the scientists' names on every payment. Here's what I can't see. The amount of the payment to the scientists, it's been redacted, blacked out. I can't see, incredibly, the third-party payer's name. Think pharmaceutical company. That name's been redacted. And I can't see what the scientist's invention was, the patent number, the license number. That's been blacked out at well. Yeah. So you have... You have Tabak in the in this House hearing say, trust us, we have firewalls. Well, excuse me, uh, I'm not comforted in the least. It feels like if there are legitimate firewalls, and it's possible, <laughs> I suppose, um, but why would they redact everything? Exactly.